In this episode of the Dr. Clay Show, we're going to talk about the difference between the glycemic index and the glycemic load. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to another episode of the Dr. Clay Show. As you can imagine, I'm Dr. Clay, and we're going to, as I said, we're going to go over the difference between the glycemic index, or GI, versus the glycemic load, or GL. Now, the glycemic index, the way that, first of all, brief uh, synopsis of what the glycemic index is. Now, both of these, the GI and the GL, are ways that you can evaluate carbs and evaluate carbs in terms of how rapidly they flood your bloodstream with sugar, with, with carbs. So, because we would generally speaking, you want to have a more time released carbohydrate source because that way the energy that the carbs provide is time released. Because if you get too much blood sugar, too much glucose from the carbs that you eat, too much glucose in your blood at one time, then some of that may end up being converted into body fat. And we don't want that. Plus, that ends up giving us uh, the highs and lows that, you know, a fluctuating blood sugar can do. So you can, you know, kind of mess up your appetite and just mess up your physique enhancement efforts overall. So long story short, we want essentially time-released carbs. Well, the glycemic index is a measure of how rapidly a particular source of carbohydrates, how rapidly it is broken down, absorbed, and how rapidly it ends up raising blood sugar. That's essentially what the GI is, the glycemic index. So the way you figure the GI, by the way, it's not something that you try on yourself. It's something that, although in theory, I guess you could. You could run some experiments at home. But what we do is we rely on these nerds that are in universities, university nerds. And and I got nothing but love for the university nerds, by the way. I am uh, practically one of them myself. But what I mean is people in the laboratory that conduct studies. And they have already done GI studies, studies where they have a bunch of subjects eat certain carbohydrate-containing foods, and then they measure how fast it raises their blood sugar. So the glycemic index is something that we just look up. So for example, sweet potatoes, you can look up the glycemic index of sweet potatoes, and you'll find that it's uh, generally it's listed as being in the 50s, low 50s, maybe um, 52, 54, but it depends on what you read. Because if I do a study, for example, let's say I'm a university nerd and I'm here in California, let's say I'm at Cal Berkeley, and I study 50 people measuring how fast a certain portion of sweet potatoes raises their blood sugar, and you're a university nerd in, uh, I don't know, New York, you're in upstate New York, and you do a study and you find that the the glycemic index is slightly different than what I found. You measure 50 people, I measure 50, and I come up with 54, and you come up with 51. And that's just um, it's just the nature of study. So what we're doing is kind of looking at the average of these. Uh, you know, when you're looking up the glycemic index, don't be alarmed if you find different values for sweet potatoes, for example, or any other carbohydrate source. It's just slightly different results from one study to the next. Now, the glycemic load is something that you can calculate based upon the glycemic index and the amount of carbs. Because here's the, uh, here's the thing with the GI versus GL. The glycemic index measures, again, how quickly a carbohydrate source raises your blood sugar. But it doesn't tell us how much it raises your blood sugar. For example, uh, peppermint candy, let's say. Glycemic index of that is going to be about 100 because it's basically just sugar. And sugar typically has a uh, kind of a standard GI of about 100. So we'll say peppermint candy has a GI of 100, which is really high. But the thing is, it only has 5 grams of carbs. So even though it might raise your blood sugar quickly, it doesn't raise it very much if you only have one piece of peppermint. Now, I'm not advocating eating peppermint because it's sugary. There's no point in eating it if you're trying to lose fat quickly. But <clears throat> nonetheless, what is kind of the, the uh, thought process is this, that it's actually the glycemic load that would matter more. And that's taking into account that glycemic index, like the peppermint, you would, 
with the glycemic load, it would take into account that it has a high GI, but that you're only going to eat five grams of carbs. So therefore, it's not going to load, and that's where the term comes in. Glycemic means having to do with sugar, essentially. And so glycemic index versus glycemic load. The load is how fast is it going to load your bloodstream with sugar. So the glycemic load, again, takes into account the amount. So without further ado, that's kind of an overview of the difference in the two. And it's arguably, and I would certainly believe it's more applicable to really look at the glycemic load, not just the glycemic index, because foods like a watermelon, for example, can be deceiving. The glycemic index is rather high, and we won't get into the fact that it contains a lot of nutrients because it's a real food, but the glycemic index of watermelon is high, but yet a portion of watermelon that you're likely to eat doesn't have a lot of carbs. The point is, it's not just the glycemic index. The glycemic load is more specific. So let me show you a couple of calculations, and we'll wrap this topic up. So here's our formula for the glycemic load. And the, the glycemic load is equal to the number of the grams of carbs times the glycemic index, and those two divided by 100. That's how you end up getting the glycemic load. Grams of carbs of the portion that you're going to eat, the portion in question, times the glycemic index divided by 100. That's your glycemic load. So let's look at a couple of examples. I, a minute ago, mentioned sweet potatoes. So let's calculate the glycemic load of sweet potatoes, and then we'll compare that to the GI of white bread. And I mentioned that the white bread has a glycemic index of about 100, and the sweet potatoes is 50. So we'll compare the eating the same amount and see how differently they load, so to speak, your blood sugar. Okay, so with the sweet potatoes, glycemic load is equal to the grams of carbs, and we're going to say, we're going to compare you know, if you ate 25 grams of carbs from sweet potatoes, so grams of carbs times a glycemic index of 50, we're going to just, uh, it's, you know, a couple of digits higher, but let's keep the math simple and we'll round it down a tad to 50. And then we'll divide that by 100. All right, so 25 times 50 is 1,250. And we're going to divide that by 100. And we end up getting 12.5. So 12.5 is the glycemic load, or the GL, for sweet potatoes. All right, for, well, for 25 grams of sweet potatoes, which is about four ounces. So 25 grams of carbs coming from white bread. Let's calculate the glycemic load of that. So 25 grams of carbs times a glycemic index of about 100. And of course, then we're going to divide that by 100. All right, so that gives us 2,500. Of course, divided by 100 ends up giving us a glycemic load of 25. And by the way, that is only two about two slices of white bread yields 25 carbs in fact maybe even a little bit more so two slices of white bread or less is the amount we're talking about versus four ounces of sweet potatoes and i can tell you the sweet potatoes are far more filling uh, will help suppress your appetite better more fiber more nutrients and all that good stuff so same amount of carbs here. Here's our grams of carbs, 25. And a lot of people think it's just about like calories in versus calories out and, you know, stuff like that. And it's, it's oversimplifying it because 25 grams of carbs here of sweet potatoes versus 25 grams of carbs from white bread has a dramatically different effect. Because as we can see here, the glycemic load of the sweet potatoes is half that of the glycemic load of white bread. So the white bread is going to flood your bloodstream with much more carbs at one time. It's gonna raise your blood sugar much more and uh, more quickly, whereas these sweet potatoes is going to give you a more sustained release. So sweet potatoes far superior here. And that is it, my friend. That is the glycemic index versus that glycemic load. And I hope this illustrates that 
it really is important, you know, what type of carb sources that you choose and what type of foods overall that you choose if you're trying to just eat right in general, especially lose fat. The type of food that you eat definitely matters. Yeah. Well, all right, that's it for our discussion of the glycemic index versus the glycemic load. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll uh, see you next week. And until next time, peace.